Hello and welcome to Archites. It's a hot these days. Autodesk released the new Revit 2024. I have to say, I really liked it. In this video, I'm going to cover some of the most important features from my point of view, and I roughly put them into the three categories, which is the user interface, the modeling tools, and the documenting tools. Before I move to that, I have to say something about related with the templates and the new sample files. So Autodesk finally made a new template, so we have no anymore the architectural, structural, metric, imperial templates, etc. Now we only have metric and imperial multidiscipline templates. You will see that the project browser is organized, that we have a more content into, into the templates, that some things in the views are presetted, that we also have a different view types. For example, if you go to the plan view and the floor plan, you will see that we have architectural, lighting, mechanical, etc. And that's because, I mean, they made those types because this is the multidiscipline templates. But as architect, you can really develop it quite a lot because this really contains such nice basics from where to start. Uh, what's also valuable to mention that uh, right now in this template, we have some legends some symbols you will see so that's what we have let's say in this template file all the symbols and the same is with the text and dimensions but we also have some schedule presetted we didn't have that in a previous template file so you can really improve it and take a nice step forward out of this one bearing in mind i mean at least from my point of view that a lot of uh, revit users who are coming to the youtube and watching those tutorials they're looking for some kind of the proof and some proven methods how something was done how someone other is thinking about this how they will solve the problem and you know you're looking for some kind of validation how some of the people i trust to did something so if you're someone who is in the learning process of Revit and you would like to get some kind of the proven methods of what's good, how something should be done, how the big company will do something, Revit made something fantastic for you and that's the new sample files. So as you could see from the homepage, we have the five different sample files related to the, each of the disciplines and I'm going to open the architectural project. So all the other disciplines are already linked in and also if you go to the drafting views, you will see the explanation how to use the project. The project itself contains very nice things like very nice families. It's grouped as well. So we have a lot of groups, we have links. We also have here different design options. So if you cannot select something, don't be afraid, just click here, exclude options, and then you will be able to do that. And also we have a different phases. All in all, this is the great material and just dig into this project file, go there, explore how the things has been done. I'm pretty sure I'm convincing you that you will be able to learn a lot. This is a really proven thing and I guarantee you that you will be able to learn a lot of very valuable things out of this model and how it's been done and structured. Just open it, go inside, dig, explore and you're gonna learn. And after you do that, just write in the comments what do you think about this. It will be great to hear from you, what are your thoughts and do you think if I'm right or not. So from my point of view, for you who's a learning Revit, this is the most valuable thing. Like in sense of getting the proven methods, how something should be done, how something should be organized, just go and dig there. And also a very important thing for all of you who's are struggling with the big model sizes, you will see that this is such a nice and complex model, but all the sample files, they're under 100 megabits of size. And it's a very good thing and it's very important when you're working in a bigger project. Now I'm going to move to the topics I mentioned at the beginning. So the first one is the user interface. And the first thing you can see is the general look of the Revit is the minimized, simplified. So the icons are simplified compared to the Revit 2023. For example, we have no shadows anymore underneath. And also the colors of the icons are more vivid. So for me, it's way more pleasant to work with this new user interface and I really like how it looks like. The next very useful thing is the search bar over the project browser. So you don't need to go control F or right click and then search. You can simply go here in the project browser and then you can type whatever you need and it's going to appear immediately. 
What you can also do now in Revit 2024 is, let's say, if you would like to create a new plan view, uh, this dialog window which, which popped up is scalable right now, it wasn't before, and in general this is a nice thing as well, not so big but nice. What they did and what is, let's say, quite big is the textures visual style and in general it's quite similar to the realistic but with the one big difference the lights cannot affect the texture visual styles appearance so it means that it will show the same how our maps are added to the materials now in sweden are coming the longer days probably i'm not going to need it but i think that a lot of you are going to like it it's finally here and it's a dark theme for Revit. you can change your user interface to be dark as well as your drawing area so to do that you need to go to options and then colors and you can take the user interface light or dark and also you can take the canvas i will just take dark for example here and then the canvas to be dark so the interface is dark but you see that there is a little bit of troubles if i can say like that regarding the 3d model anyway if you open any of the views you see that the drawing area in the views looks very nice for this 3d model it doesn't and it's probably because of the appearance so if i change it a little bit and if i go here and change the background to none you see that also the 3d view is going to look better uh, anyway if this still looks strange to you you can just click here on canvas and it's going to return the drawing area into the white background color the next topic are modeling tool Revit finally fixed the problem with the topography so now we have no any more topo surface it's been replaced with a topo solid and the logic of the topo solid is way better you will find the topo solid under the massing inside tab and it works quite similar to the floors and roofs and to create it you don't need to go point by point as it was uh, for the topo surface you just need to create a sketch the same principle as you are doing for the floors you can fillet it and you can put any kind of radial edges and when you are done with shaping you can just click finish so you see it looks flat why well, i said it's quite similar to the floors and roof so if you select it you will see that it contains different layers but by default the earth layer is variable so it means that when you adjust the height only this layer is going to change its height while the other layers are going to remain the same thickness so in order to edit it you need just to add some points you can add them here on the edges as well and then you simply need to go to modify sub elements and what you can do now you can simply drag them or if you set it up your projects and you set it up project based points survey point you can enter the value from those points or from the current level or internal origin so it gives such nice control of editing i will in this case just simply drag some of them so you see it looks quite cool and it's definitely way simpler method than it was with the topo surfaces i will just create one wall here and we'll open this section so you see that the hour wall is protruding the terrain but if i go to modify and cut the wall out of the element you see that we have such a nice cut and before to do something like that was impossible and this is a great tool because the topo surface now can be cuttable with the floors and uh, and walls and this is very useful when you would like to create the foundation walls for example uh, the next big improvement we have no building pads anymore so now it works the same as the other solid element so we need to cut out geometry out of it so you can use mass or generic model in place elements actually voids and to cut them out i will just show you example where i'm going to cut out the mess so, so i will just create a mess and let's make it to be to have a shape like this just select the whole mess and make it as a void and then go to modify use cut and cut it out click finish uh, what I have to say that now we have a possibility to split the surface so if you select it and take a split tool you will be able 
to make it uh, let's say like this and then you see it created a different surface here so it means that we can add completely different type like so and there is no subregions anymore now instead of that we have something which is called subdivide so it works pretty similar you select the mess go to subdivide and then you draw any kind of shape you want and you see how it look like uh, what is the difference that it has a value so it has kind of the thickness what's bad it cannot have the minus value or it couldn't be zero so it must have some kind of positive value and if I let's say make it 100 it's going to go down and you can of course anytime change the material of, of the subdivision so you don't need to go to paint you can just select it and then just go here and add different material what is a nice thing which Revit announced with the topo solid is that they can hold the slab edges so if I go here and if I would like to add some of them you see it's done it could be very good for the curbs but it only could be because this only works when the terrain is flat if you if your terrain has any slopes placing slab edges is going to be impossible so you see if I take the slab edge and if I go here to the curved edges it's completely impossible I can only take it I can only place it to the completely flat edges it's a very good design idea but must be developed that's for sure the next very valuable thing is that you can now align the pattern according to the surface face so if you take align you will see the options to align it to the entire surface or to the selected face so if i pick selected face and let's say pick this edge over here and then pick this line you see that it's going to align only this part only this face here while if i take entire surface and again select this one here and then this one here you see that the whole surface is aligned revit announced the draw order in families and i mean as you know a lot of families are not consist only of the 3d elements they contain 2d elements as well and for example if you have let's say few symbolic lines let's say like this and then you would like to place some kind of the field region above and you would like to have the field region above you can just select it go bring to front and you see that the lines are not going to be visible or if you would like just this line to be at the top you can select it bring to front and you see how it works i mean it's pretty useful thing because before we didn't have that opportunity and you know how you set it up in a family is going to look like that in a project and when you're printing the next topic is about the documenting tools and there are some very nice improvements in this area as well and the first one i'm going to mention is that you will be able to place multiple views at the same time on a sheet i will just create an empty sheet let's take this one we'll put the sheet number one to three and the way to place a multiple sheets at the same time is you can just go here and select them with holding control simply drag them to the sheet so you see that the Revit now ordered them so before they were one above the other now the Revit split them so all four I selected are visible so if I just click they're going to place in this order the selection is still on so if I just simply drag this one it's going to be like that and if I would like to select one of those not four of them I just need to select somewhere at the empty canvas and I can then select any of them and then reorder them on the way I want or I can simply delete the views I don't want because I made a mistake for example the other way to add views on sheets is to go to the views and then go here view and then you can select you use from here click ok and here they are I can just move them like this for example and let's say that I obviously made a mistake with this one as you could see they do not fit on the on the same sheet I will just create one sheet more with duplicating this one and then you see it's one to four 
What I'm going to do right now, and this is the new feature of Revit, simply right click on the view and then go move align to sheet. And I will pick this one to four. What it's going to do, because it's aligned, it's going to move it at the same place where it was on a previous sheet. And I'm just simply going to drag it here. But let's say that I made a mistake about the sheet name and this doesn't need to be to one to four, it needs to be to one to five and it's on the right position. I can simply do the same thing and it's going to move it to the correct position to the one to five sheet. So when it comes to the views and sheets and let's say you have these views placed somewhere on a sheet and you don't wanna look where it is, you can simply do the right click here and then you can go open sheet and it's going to immediately open the sheet where this view is placed. This is a, such a nice shortcut and this is a really nice time saving feature. A very nice thing which you can do in Revit is also to set revisions to multiple sheets and you can do that with selecting sheets with the control or you can just simply click first and the last one with holding shift and then go here revisions on the sheet and you can add those three let's say click ok so if you open those sheets you will see them here a very useful thing which you can do right now is that you can schedule the revision cloud so you simply go and create a new schedule quantities scroll down there and you will find revision clouds click ok and then here you will be able to add comments marker and revisions but you can also add some other uh, parameters related to the revisions views sheets and project information so for all of you who likes architectural visualization and loves to do renderings there is a, such a great news and it's that the twin motion is now included into the revit subscription so what you have to do is just go uh, into your autodesk account and search twin motion under your products and then go here to access and just download install it and enjoy it will be great to hear from you what do you think about the Revit 2024, what do you think about the things I mentioned, so just feel free to write in the comments, I will very gladly reply to you and of course if you have any suggestions for the videos and the things you would like to see related to the Revit 2024, just suggest it, it's great to get your ideas as well. As I said at the beginning, I really like how they upgraded Revit 2024 and I would like to encourage you to try it, to test it, but if you have the projects which you are running in some of the previous versions, I will not suggest you to transfer it to the Revit 2024 yet, because maybe some of the plugins and the other things which you are using are not available for this. And I mean, my practice is that I am never using for the official projects the newest version until the first update is released. Thank you very much for watching, I really hope that you like this one, if so press like button and subscribe to our channel.